So you know what they say about best laid plans, even with plenty of forethought, when it comes to working parents and childcare, there is always a need for a solid plan B. On The Coffee Group today, we have parenting advisor John Cowan and organisational coach Rachel King. Morning to you both. Good, Good morning. morning. John, let's just start. What do you mean by what ifs? What sort of scenarios are we talking about? I mean, it, it's expensive and inconvenient to arrange care for your kids, but then you've got on top of that, what happens if your carer gets sick? What happens if you get a ring from the school that your child's uh, unwell? You know, that, those sorts of things. You know, or you, you suddenly get asked to stay back at work because there's some important mm. thing you have to do. And all of your best laid plans go out the window. So you've got to have a backup, otherwise you're going to waste so much energy actually thinking about it. Yes, and many parents do try to wing it with no plan Bs in place and that does not yeah. work so well. Uh, Rachel, you specialise in putting systems in place, but do you also find yourself stressing about the plan Bs? Well, I think the very nature of kids is that they can be unpredictable at the best of times <laughs> and parenting has a lot of unexpecteds coming up. So certainly for me to keep the stress levels down, it's so important to, to know and expect that I will be facing plan B mm. scenarios from time to time. So just and have it in the back of your head? Yeah, just having that mindset so that I don't get completely stressed when, some, when the kids throw a curveball. And if I'm calm, they'll be calm, and we'll all be great. And that's the way yeah. it should all work, shouldn't <laughs> yeah. it? That sounds perfect that in does. theory. Um, John, the what-ifs, um, they might never happen, so how much time and energy should you put into thinking about them? Well, that's true for every safety belt, every crash helmet, every life jacket. They probably won't get needed, but to be ready when needed, they have to be ready when not needed. And uh, so you, uh, you can just relax so much more knowing that if your regular caregiver gets sick, then auntie has said that she can step in. Mm. But we're also talking with the what ifs. I guess it's not just things like childcare, it's like the big yeah. things like natural disasters, earthquakes, That's right. obviously, mm. and uh, house fires and fires and things like that. Yeah, and I think we can give our kids some really basic safety training at an age appropriate level, but again, it's so important that we don't make them think that there's a fire around every corner, you know, yeah. so if we've got some really simple strategies for them, we can then yeah. kind of back off the, the intensity. So what sort yeah. of thing do you need to do to keep them calm in those mm, sort of situations? Well, as I mentioned, staying, um, expecting the odd unexpected yourself can help having that mindset. Also putting things in perspective when things do go wrong, reminding yourself that if you've got to leave a meeting early to pick up a child or you've got to arrange something, it's not the end of the world. Mm. Um, and again on that note, having gratitude for um, the help that you can get. Um, when I was in Starship with my daughter with a broken arm the night before her birthday party, mm. and I was supposed to be making her cake and um, planning her party, mm. I could have got completely stressed, but I actually sat there feeling really grateful for the medical system and mm. thinking, this and is great. And that your daughter was still alive. And that she was fine. Exactly. Yeah. Let's face it, you can always buy a cake. You can. You it's can. not going to make you the bad mummy no. if you buy I a cake. Actually, I managed to make it. The Did next you? Morning, yeah. squeezed it on oh, me. Wow. Yeah. Oh, you are a super mm. mum. <laughs> um, you know what? Your, your kids are probably going to be okay in a lot of these situations. The teacher's going to look after them, people will step up and look for your kids, but your kids don't know that. And so a big part of it is just so that you can reassure them, hey, mm. if you can't ever get in touch with mum and I because of something happening, then realise that you, we know the neighbours next door or, you know, grandma's mm. just down the road, people will be, be looking out for you. And just to reassure them. And they've got it in their, the back of their minds That's that there right. is a, a safeguard mm. if something goes wrong. Uh, what about things like stopping your child, safety precautions, stopping your child getting into the first car that rolls along? Again, I was going to say, I think it's at an age appropriate level letting them know when they're really little, you don't want to be telling them that there's a kidnapper around every corner. Yeah. You know, it's once they start walking to school by themselves yeah. that you want to start giving them some of that basic safety training in a low key way so they don't pick up on a stress that, that doesn't yeah. need to be there. Some families use a family password if a person wants to pick your child up and said, Mum sent me to pick you up, and they have to, then your child knows to say, What's the family password? If they don't know the password, they don't get in the car. That's actually a really great idea. Mm. A really tremendous idea. So who else should know about these plans, these what-if plans? Well, especially the children. Well, obviously. Yeah, obviously the children. Oh, right. yeah. what and the people that are going to be doing it. Yeah. The thing is, with Plan B, because people know that this isn't going to happen very often, or if at all, often people like neighbours and relatives are very willing to help uh, because they know that they are just Plan B. And so, um, you know... Those, those sorts of people. Also schools sometimes need, like to know um, if they can't get in touch with you, what's the alternative?
the person they can call. Because mm, there's nothing worse than having a child with a sick bay and having the school not able to reach any of the parents. Mm. 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 What about you, Rachel? Yeah, I think same as what John said, that um, letting relatives know, you know, we've, we've actually got a little spreadsheet with a people that can help on different days if required we very rarely need to use that but so those people obviously know the kids know that it'll be someone that they know well mm. and that granny might turn up to pick them up from school if one of us is of unavailable. course you've got a spreadsheet I was just say, of course a she's got this is That's the most the organized woman in the us. world absolutely <laughs> hey it's been a pleasure having you in some great advice here thank you very much john and rachel and don't forget to check out nelly's all natural laundry soda at nelly's.co.nz mm.